Now, uh, the other thing is to visit Ziyara. Ziyara. Ziyara to Salihin. Visiting righteous people. Now the Salih. The Salih. You have Maratib uh, with Allah. The highest is the Nibi. Rasul. And then the second is Siddiq. The third is Shaheed. And the fourth is Salih. Now, really, they're all Salih. Right? They're all Salih. A Shaheed has to be a Salih. The Siddiq has to be a Salih. And the Anbiya are all Salihin in their nature. Saluha in Arabic means to be uh, sound. And this is related to Salama. Right? Soundness, wholeness. The one who has a Qalb Salim. So Salih is somebody who's sound, healthy. They're not diseased. So their heart isn't diseased like other people's. A Salih is the one, the definition of a Salih. You addi haq Allah, wa you addi haq al ibad. That's the Salih. He gives what's due to Allah, and He gives what's due to the slaves of Allah. That's a Salih. So when you see somebody who's a, he has taqwa, that's what's due to Allah. Taqwa. Do what He commands you to do, avoid what He prohibited you from doing. That's, that's haq Allah. Haq al ibad are any of those responsibilities that you have in the world towards other uh, people. So the salih cannot cheat. He, that's fasiq. Because the opposite of salih is a fasiq or a talih. Right? So the salih doesn't lie. He doesn't cheat. Because haq al-ibad, to be truthful to them. That's a haq of people. Right? They have a right to be told the truth. You can't lie to them. So the salih is somebody who should be visited. Now, the, most of the ulama not only encourage visiting the salihin who are alive, but also the salihin who are dead. And that means that if you're, for instance, in Medina, you go to Baqiyah, and you visit the, the, the salihin of Baqiyah, and you, and you give them salam, and tarahma alayhim. And the Prophet ﷺ used to visit uh, Sayyidina Hamza, and he visited the, the, the maqbara, and he said, Kuntu anhakum an ziyara fazuruha. I used to tell you, don't visit graves because of the, what the Jahili Arabs used to do with the graves. But once they were purified of all that Jahiliya, they were given permission by the Prophet to visit the graves. Uh-huh. What do you say when you the You should make dua for them, you know, and, uh, and ask to uh, benefit from their knowledges. One of the uh, Ahmad Baba Timbukti, who's a great scholar from uh, Timbuktu, who was actually taken as a slave to Morocco. And, and when he got to Morocco, uh, he, was, he was so much more learned than any of the scholars in Marrakesh that they realized that they'd made a grave mistake. Um, but he mentions in his book, he wrote a book, uh, Dibaj al Mudahab, he did a uh, hashia on Ibn Farhun's book of Tabaqat, and he mentions going to several of the graves of the righteous in Marrakesh. And one of, at one of the graves he asked that Allah gave him understanding of two books that he wrote. And he said that by Allah he, he went back and the books, he could read them without any difficulty. And he was a great scholar. So um, that, that was traditionally, uh, you know, to ask for the benefit uh, of their knowledges because most of the, those people were, were scholars and things like that. And tarahum, that Allah give them nur in their grave and bless them. Qadi Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi, who's just outside of Fas, and gave fatwa of visiting the graves of the Salihin. And same with Ibn al-Hajj. And if people say that it's a bid'ah, that's just, you know, it's not consistent with the vast majority of our scholars. The vast majority of them have not only uh, uh, permitted it, but recommended it. And, uh, and those are outward scholars, you know, of fiqh, that are well known in the tradition. So Qadi Abu Bakr, uh, his grave is well known outside of Fez. He was poisoned uh, by the Muahideen and died there as Shaheed. And he also fought jihad several times. He wrote 
two commentaries on the Quran. Uh, he brought the Ihya Ulum al Deen from Imam al Ghazali. He studied with him the Ihya and actually brought it to uh, Morocco uh, and Andalusia. And just a great scholar there. And anybody who's been to that place, you know, you, there, there's just there's a lot of barakah there, inshallah. So. And, but the living, the people who are living, if you have an opportunity to, to visit them, and also, if, if you should have high himma. In, in, in other words, you should desire to be one, so that our ummah has people that you can visit. <laughs> right? We need these people. So, you know, you should make the intention to be one yourself, inshallah, and that Allah give you tawfiq and give all of us tawfiq to do that. Um, one of the poets, he said, إِذَا مَا عَلَى الْمَرْءُ إِذَا مَا عَلَى الْمَرْءُ رَامَ الْعُلَى If a man does not gain heights, if he has not achieved heights, at least he aspires to heights. وَمَنْ يَقْنَعُ بِالدُّونِ كَانَ دُونَ And whoever's content with less than heights, he's less than heights. In other words, that's, that's an indication that he's... he's He's a, a lowly person, that he doesn't even aspire to heights. And the greatest aspiration is to be close to Allah. Yeah. So if, you have, if you're in the dunya, have a high himma. And Sidi ibn Atayillah said, if you don't think Allah can take you in this moment and make you one of his awliya, then you don't know anything about his qudra. So you should never have despair, have yas. You should want to be from the people of wilaya and the people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ziyara is important. If you're able to visit these people, you visit them. And when you visit them, uh, one, uh, the people of, of this who, who I visited, they don't chit-chat. They're not people that you go to, you know, how you doing and how's... You go for the benefit of, of learning something and also the benefit of their dua. And you, you should ask them for their dua because their dua might be accepted. And if it is, then you get the benefit of that. So you visit them, you ask them for the dua, and you show humility uh, with them, humbleness, don't be arrogant. Uh, and I'll tell you something about Mullah Ramadan, who was from the Salihin. And he was the father of Sheikh uh, Saeed Ramadan at Bulti. And I, uh, Sheikh Saeed wrote a book, Hada Wadidi, This Is My Father. And he's told about what a great man his father was. But I once asked uh, Dr. Bukhar, who's a Libyan, about him, and he told me, uh, and you can confirm this, he's in New Jersey, I think. Uh, he told me, I asked him, he said he met Munda Ramadan, and I wanted to know, because it's always good to hear stories of these people, because it strengthens your iman. And he told me, subhanAllah, the amazing thing about visiting that man, he said, I've always hated kissing hands. And he said, and uh, he said, just something I never really bothered me, that whole idea of kissing people's hands. And he said, I went in there and he said, he put out his hand and he said, I felt pressure on my head. And I, I went down and I found myself kissing his hand. And he said, I looked back and there was nothing there. And he just said that he was compelled to kiss his hand. You know, and he, he was a man of Allah. Sheikh, Sheikh Mullah Ramadan. He really was. He was a man of Allah. So those people, they're, they're worth visiting. And fortunately, they still exist. You know, you can find them in... Uh, uh, and there's, there's some women that, like I've met, Murat al-Hajj's wife, Maryam, is definitely, I consider her from the Salihat, Tuzar, and uh, even their servant, Gabula, um, people go, when they visit Murat al-Hajj, they visit his wife, and then they go visit the servant, Gabula, and ask her to make dua for them. And uh, there's a woman there, Aisha bint Minni also, who's a very righteous woman and a scholar, she's a alima. Uh, Fatima bint Nofal, who's in, uh, 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 who's in uh, Dar al Bayda. I mean, there's good people, alhamdulillah. So, uh, if you get an opportunity, you visit them. And with that i'tiqad, you know, and Allah knows their station. We're only, it's a belief, and we can't, like when we were looking at the seerah earlier about uh, Khawla, the wife of, um, of uh, uh, Uthman ibn Mad'un. When she said, you know, he, he's in Jannah, the Prophet got angry. So, we don't say they're awliya uh, with jazam. We believe that they're people of wilaya. But we can't say he's a wali and make a halaf and wallahi innahu la wali wa innam yukun wali fa'ana ketur keta. That, that's up to Allah. Uh, 